Our co-founder, Nico, was recently driving through Seattle a few days ago, heading to visit some family members for the 4th of July. He said usually the one-lane road leading to their house isn't busy. Usually six or ten cars stopped at the stoplight, diverting traffic. But he was telling me this time there were more than 150 cars trying to get to the beach to see some fireworks. So they were at a dead stop at times, and that drive should have normally taken around 30 minutes, but this one took two hours. Now, on a small scale, that road works very well. But when traffic starts to grow and a lot of more cars join the road, the road becomes congested and slows down. This is almost exactly what is happening on the Ethereum network. There is so much traffic that the fees to be on the blockchain are going up, and the blockchain is getting really expensive, even for small things. Let's imagine they add another lane that went the exact same route. Or what if they added a lot of lanes to the blockchain? Well, that is a metaphor for what sharding is. They are essentially creating more highway lanes for a blockchain, so that one lane highway could now have 30 lanes, or 64 lanes if it needed it, and they could all work together so that more cars can travel. Welcome to Whiteboard Crypto, the number one YouTube channel for crypto education, and here we explain topics of the cryptocurrency world using analogies, stories, and examples so that you can easily understand them. In this video, we are going to explain what sharding is, how it works, and why it's beneficial. First off, what is sharding? Sharding is actually a concept that comes from database organizations. See, databases usually hold a ton of information, and because of this, database engineers realized they needed to split up the data so that they could store it safely, securely, and to make sure that the equipment they had could actually store it. So they split the data up and stored it on many different pieces of hardware. Well, in terms of cryptocurrencies, sharding refers to splitting up blockchains into many different parts. In the case of Ethereum 2.0, the developers plan to create 64 different shards so that the information of the blockchain is split up. If you're curious what Ethereum 2.0 is or what other features it is adding, you should definitely check out our new video on that topic. Let's go over the main benefit of sharding. Right now, the Ethereum network is super congested, meaning a ton of people are wanting to do transactions on it. To give you an example, there can only be 15 transactions a second. And because of this, Ethereum uses a bidding system to get your transactions through. A few weeks ago, the transaction fees reached a high of $50, which is crazy to think about that just sending money using Ethereum would cost a $50 fee. Well, to fix this, one of the plans they had in mind for a long time actually is to implement sharding. This way there will be 64 blockchains that can accommodate a much higher transaction throughput. Before we get too much further, one thing we want to introduce is the trilemma of blockchain scaling. So basically, in a blockchain there are three main things that you can consider. Security, scalability, and decentralization. To help you understand how this works, you just need to know that in today's technological research, you can really only pick two of these. If you start to improve the third one, it seems that the other two start to degrade. For example, we can make the Ethereum network super scalable, up to a million transactions per second. We could do that. However, we would need to make it more centralized, similar to how Visa works. And because of that centralization, it would also make it more hackable, which would then degrade the security. As another example, if we wanted to maybe increase security, we can make each block extremely difficult to solve, but that would greatly lower the amount of transactions that can happen per second, and also limit the amount of people who can become miners, which would mean only those with lots of money to invest in the miners could participate, effectively making the network more centralized. Let's go over a real life example. Think about it like this. When you're in college, you can pick social life, a good sleep schedule, or good grades. When you start to lean on one, you see the effect on the others. Growing a blockchain is very similar to this, and since Ethereum needs these upgrades, the developers had to think of a way to improve all three if it was possible. To expand on our metaphor, this would be like if your grandfather was the dean of that school. Because of this, you could have great grades because you could bribe the teachers. Then you would get great sleep because of the grades that you got. And finally, your social life would probably improve because people would want to be your friends so that maybe you could pull some strings for them. So sharding seems to be the best idea to increase scalability without losing the security benefits of the Ethereum network and keeping it totally decentralized. Speaking of keeping it decentralized and secure, there are actually some secondary effects of sharding, and I'm going to go over those now. 
So one of the secondary benefits that you might not think of is how the network is actually stored. Right now, there are Ethereum nodes, and they are actually computers which keep a full record of the entire blockchain. Every day, that blockchain grows. So sharding allows a bunch of computers to only need to keep record of a small portion of the blockchain. That way, the nodes aren't required to have huge storage equipment as the Ethereum blockchain data grows. Another benefit you might not think about is how the nodes are selected to validate the shards. According to Vitalik Buterin, who actually created Ethereum and is the head of the project, he said on Lex Friedman's podcast that you can think about it as an example like this. Imagine there are 64 shards and 6,400 nodes. Well, each time that a block in a shard needs to be verified, the beacon chain, which we talked about in our Ethereum 2.0 video, will then randomly select 100 nodes to validate a block. And then for the next block, they will select another 100 random nodes to do the validation, meaning they could be completely different nodes validating that block. Now this means to attack the network, you would need a very large portion to perform an attack. Not only that, but you would need a large portion of the network for a decent amount of time, not just for a few blocks. So, as a summary, sharding is a feature that is usually used in data centers. However, the Ethereum network is currently using it for its next upgrade for many reasons. The main reason is that so much more information can flow through the blockchain, but the secondary reasons are so that the network is harder to attack and also to keep the physical requirements of becoming a node to participate on the network much more affordable. Now that was a mouthful, but it basically sums up what the use of of sharding is. As we end this video, I want to thank you so much for watching this video. We hope that you've enjoyed it. We really hope that you've learned something from this video, and most of all, we hope to see you in the next one.